Couch piercings. Pros, cons, buy a piercer. The advantages, disadvantages of getting a conch piercing. Want to know them? Well, stick around because it's coming up next. Those that are new to the channel and don't know who I am, my name is Devo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I'm the owner and operator of the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa and inside the lovely Skin Kitchen. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to you with years and years of experience of doing conch piercings and helping people through the healing process afterwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through five advantages, five disadvantages, or five pros, five cons of conch piercings. So, let's get started. We're going to start out with the pros, the advantages. Number one, this piercing lends itself to a lot of different placements and a lot of different groupings, meaning that you can position it uh, in a large span of the ear. Uh, you can do things like industrials. You can do things like orbits. It all comes down to how much anatomy you have to work with and your imagination and that of in the skill and ability of your piercer. One thing to consider is that um, basically as long as it's not going to get in contact with, uh, with uh, glasses, I guess would probably be the primary concern, you're pretty broad and wide open on what the placement of the piercing is going to be. Number two, hails out in some cases as quickly as 8 to 12 weeks. This piercing, and I'll get into some of that a little bit later, can have a tendency to be grumpy and long-term healing from person to person, but it can heal fairly quickly and has a long history of healing with little or no problem. Number three, this is a very unique piercing, not a very common one. Um, not like other piercings where you're going to see them over and over again. Conch piercings um, have been kind of a rather obscure piercing um, outside of the uh, body piercing, body art subculture. They have gained a little bit of popularity, let's say, in the last couple of years, and I am doing more of them than I did ever before, but they're still a very unique and interesting piercing that not everybody's going to have. Number four can be angled to the natural curvature or flow of the ear. If you look at an ear, you're kind of looking at a shape that's C-shaped, and there are various different ridges that intertwine with that. Well, there's the main ridge uh, at the top where we do rooks. There's the second ridge right there where the daith is done at the uh, kind of the base of the helix. Um, and then, of course, there's the ridge on the bottom. Um, right in here where the anatrachis is done. Since the conch is done through the outer part, um, it can be done uh, pretty much within any angle. It can be done in a way where it kind of flows with those natural ridges. Um, and combined with uh, a number of groupings can kind of fit into that ear and give it kind of that liberty spike or liberty kind of a crown look to it. Um, it all comes down once again to your imagination in the, 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 your anatomy and the ability of the piercer that's doing it. It's one of those piercings where if the piercer's doing it correctly, it can kind of fit into that flow and naturalness of the ear and not look out of place. Number five. This is a piercing that you can wear a fairly good amount of jewelry, different types of style in it once it heals. Um, from curved rings to circular rings to uh, barbells, brace studs, all kinds of stuff can fit in this piercing. Um, and there's a large variety of stuff out there to fill it up with. So now that we've uh, hit the positive, the pros, let's get into the cons. Uh, five disadvantages. Number one, this piercing has to be isolated. You have to keep things away from it during the healing process. And when I say isolated, I mean don't sleep on it. Uh, do not wear any type of headgear or anything that's going to be constrictive. Make sure that anything that comes in contact with it is clean and cleaned on a regular basis. Avoid contact with telephones, etc. Um, it just needs to be left alone and given that extra little bit of babying and care to get through the healing process. 
For that reason, we move on to number two. This can be a difficult piercing with some individuals to heal. For one reason or another, more people are prone to it than other. Uh, I would say the biggest thing is changing that sleeping habit. If you do sleep on the side that you're piercing, you are probably going to have issues. Um, you just have to isolate it. You have to take that extra care and give it that extra time to heal. Number three, limited in the style and type of jewelry that you can wear in it when you are healing it. You see kind of a pattern going here? After it heals, you have a little bit more freedom, but during the healing process, it can be very restrictive. With this piercing, um, we've pierced them for years with extremely large, wide uh, diameter rings. They can be done that way. I have had clients that have little or no issue healing them out with those. However, it creates a couple of problems. The first one being is that it creates that hinge effect where the jewelry moves up and down, and that can cause issues. Uh, including prolonged healing. It takes up a lot of space and people want something that's super tight to the ear but we need to have it wide so that there's plenty of space for not only the piercing to be as flat as possible but with the jewelry inside the piercing but also because the area is kind of shaped like a T. It isn't just like a lobe where you're dealing with one surface. You have this edge or outer edge that's kind of shaped like a T and that jewelry has to wrap all the way around it. For that reason I generally suggest piercing this with either a barbell or a labre stud initially. Something that's a little bit on the long side to allow for that inflammation and proper cleaning and avoid uh, abuse if it's you know, which you can cause, uh, tight jewelry can cause. Number four, can go through a lot of stages of grumpiness. I have already kind of brushed on this, but this piercing, once it starts acting up, it can act up and be very uncomfortable. You have to kind of just baby that thing, isolate it, keep things away from it. Uh, the other thing with grumpiness is it can have a prolonged healing period, and just like upper ear cartilage, sometimes they can flare up even after they heal. If you sleep on them wrong, change jewelry to something that's a little bit more abusive, um, or something changes, uh, they can suddenly just flare up out of the blue. So that's one of those things you want to consider before getting this done. Number five, I kind of go through what I would generally suggest if you came in and you were asking to get this piercing. I usually go through a brief consultation of kind of giving you an example of what it's going to take to heal that piercing. First thing is, healing time, I generally suggest treating this like a healing piercing for a minimum of two months uh, to three months, eight to 12 weeks. During which, uh, doing hot soaks or compresses of warm water and sea salt twice daily, um, and then rinsing immediately afterwards for roughly about 10 minutes. Cleaning, uh, once a day at least um, with a mild antimicrobial or germicidal soap, twice if you feel like the area has been contaminated, Cross-contamination prevention, common sense things. Wash your hands before you handle it. No oral contact or exchanging of bodily fluids on you around the piercing until it heals. Keeping your environment clean, clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with it. Uh, not submerging the piercing in bodies of water you can't control the quality of, which is everything but your own clean bathtub. Keeping pets away from it. Don't let them sleep in the bed with you. Additionally, you need to be concerned about anything that comes out of a spray can or squirt bottle. Uh, if you use that in your hair, you want to shield it with a folded paper towel. You want to avoid contact with unclean objects. I know I'm kind of repeating myself, but avoid contact with telephones, headphones, earbuds, anything that may contact the piercing or contact the area around the piercing. The thing with bacteria and other pathogens is they do have the ability to move on the skin. So even though you're putting earbuds in here and they never seem to come in contact with a conch, there is a possibility if those are unclean that that those pathogens can transfer on your skin and then transfer into the piercing and cause an infection. Abuse, you do in isolation, you do want, want to sleep on this piercing flat out until it is completely healed. Uh, I don't care how well it feels to lay down or, or, or put pressure on it, you want to wait until afterwards. If you're involved in any type of sporting events, you cannot remove the jewelry during the healing process.
the jewelry needs to stay in until it is completely healed. If you're in a competitive or sport or something where they're going to require you to remove it, I would suggest waiting until you are done with that particular thing and have a or have a break long enough to where you can put a retainer or something else in it without losing the piercing. Also, uh, equipment, sporting equipment, helmets, etc., are not going to be your best option during the healing process. If it's cold outside, you want to make sure that anything you put over your ears is cleaned on a regular basis and is not constrictive or abrasive to the piercing itself. So that covers some of the basics. Uh, five pros, five cons of conch piercings. I hope that this gives you an educated um thing to talk about with your piercer when you go in to get it pierced. Um, talk to them about what they suggest, what they don't suggest, um, but also so that you know a little bit better whether or not this is the piercing for you. If I did not cover something or you have a question about something I already covered and I kind of blazed over it and didn't give you a lot, enough details, please leave a comment below. I, I love answering questions. I love learning new things. If other people feel like I missed something that they think is important, Please leave, a, please leave a comment. I'll be happy to uh, address that and carry on the conversation from there. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up because that means you liked us. It's like applauding. If you would like to see uh, more uh, piercing education videos and videos on tattooing and body art in general, please subscribe. If you don't want to miss one episode or one video that we post, hit that notification bell. If you don't like notifications, don't hit the notification bell because it will send you a notification every single time we post something. And we generally do that about three to four times a week, um, including uh, our weekly update with the tattoos of the week and what I've been up to, um, Body Piercing Basics, uh, which is one of my other videos uh, series, and also Q&A in the Kitchen, which is a panel discussion show on body art, tattoo, piercing, and just about everything else. Other than that, um, if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see you for your piercing needs in the future. Everyone else, have a good day. Happy piercing and be safe.